I'm Gerald Zamponi, Senior Associate Dean for Research at the Faculty of Medicine, University of Calgary. I'm also a neuroscientist working on mechanisms of pain and then Alberta Innovates Health Solutions uh, scientist. We are trying to develop, uh, develop new therapeutics for uh, pain uh, using a very different approach from what has traditionally been done uh, to develop new analgesics. In your skin and in your or organs you have nerve endings that detect a number of different stimuli. They could be uh, heat, it could be mechanical stimuli, it could be injuries. And what happens is that these nerve endings then trigger uh, nerve impulses that travel along those uh, neurons all the way to the spinal cord. There they communicate with another set of nerve cells that then uh, project to the brain. And in the brain is actually where we perceive pain as an unpleasant sensation. Painful stimuli uh, trigger nerve impulses. And these nerve impulses have to travel all along the nerve from the site of the injury all the way to your spinal cord. And that, uh, these nerve impulses are dependent on ion channels. So uh, electrical activity in, in neurons and in the brain is all due to different ion channels being active. And among these ion channels are T-type calcium channels. So these T-type calcium channels do two things. They first, they regulate how electrically excitable a nerve fiber really is. So that means when you have too many of these T-channels, the nerve fibers start to fire action potentials more easily, and that's a bad thing in the context of pain. And they also contribute to the communication between your peripheral nerve fibers and the neurons that project to the brain. So they actually contribute to the release of neurotransmitters. And so again, if you have too many T-channels, uh, this neurotransmitter release is too active and you get too much communication and that's a bad thing. What happens under normal circumstances, these channels are there, they're important for, for these nerve cells. In response to an injury, somehow uh, there is more of the T-type channel protein produced, right? And we found an enzyme that's responsible for that. So in response to an injury, this enzyme is um, enhanced and interacts with the T-type channels and increases their lifetime in the, in the cell membrane. So there is more of them there. So every protein goes to the cell membrane, stays there for a little bit, and at some point gets recycled. But this particular mechanism keeps them there longer, so you have more of them. When you have more of them, you have more pain signaling. What we're trying to do is uh, come up with a molecule, a small drug molecule, that prevents the association of the enzyme with the calcium channel. So if you can do this, and you can validate that in animal models, the next step is simply to test it in people. So we're not looking at the mechanism in, 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 in humans. Ultimately, you want to do a clinical trial if you have a, if you have a compound and determine whether or not it's effective in pain. Yeah. So that's where people come in. So the Alberta Pfizer Translational Fund will allow us to take our laboratory findings to the next level. So there are a couple of things that we want to do. We want to test whether the model that we've looked at applies to other pain models besides the one that we looked at. So we want to look at a, a, a gastrointestinal inflammation model to see if it works in IBS. And we want to see if it works uh, in diabetic neuropathy. So that's one thing. It just allows us to validate our approach in other conditions of chronic pain. It also allows us to identify uh, more molecules that um, could be used to uh, test this mechanism in vitro. And finally, it allows us to do secondary screening for compounds that are identified at CDRD. So it's a one and a half year project, and you know, we have to obviously juggle all these different aspects accordingly, but it will allow us to sort of strengthen the IP position that we have right now and hopefully get more interest from the pharma industry to try to take what we have and commercialize it in, in, in the long run. Ultimately, uh, we want to identify one or two or three or four drug molecules that ultimately make a difference in people. That's the, that's, that's the end goal. Uh, whether we'll get there, time will tell, but that's what motivates us.